In this video, I will show you how to build a HomeKit controller for RGB LED light strips with the Raspberry Pi using Node.js. Like the other videos in the Raspberry Pi series, this one builds off the work I did in the previous ones. If you built your own web-based RGB LED controller that I covered in the last video, you will need to stop that server before continuing on. On the command line, simply type sudo pm2 stop all and hit enter. First up, let's install git. From the Raspberry Pi command line, type the command below and hit enter. Git is a version control system. We'll be using it to download an open source HomeKit accessory server written in Node.js. If you've been following along with the previous videos, in our Node directory on the Raspberry Pi, enter the command on the screen and hit enter. This is the HomeKit accessory server. We will be using it to build the RGB LED controller. Once finished, we can move on to Atom. Connect to the Raspberry Pi. In the remote view, expand the HAP Node.js directory, and then expand the Accessories directory. Right-click on each underscore accessory file and delete them. These are example files for building different type of HomeKit accessories. Now right-click on the type.js file and download it. Then click back on the local view in the sidebar. Right-click on the Accessories folder and choose New File. Name it BM LED strip underscore accessory .js. See the description below for a link to the GitHub page for the code to paste into the file and then upload that file to the Raspberry Pi. This code will be loaded by the HomeKit accessory server and will spin up our RGB LED controller and expose it to HomeKit on your iOS device. This section pulls in the node.js packages we'll be using. This defines the GPIO pins our RGB LEDs are connected to. Here we start defining the light controller accessory. Note, our lights deal with the intensity of three primary colors, red, blue, and green, whereas HomeKit deals with the brightness, or value, hue, and saturation. Both methods are different ways to describe colors. In the coming code, we occasionally have to use formulas to convert from HSD to RGB and back. First, we define some default values. This is the start function. When the process begins, change the light strip color to green and inform HomeKit of the current status. Set power function. This handles the HomeKit on-off commands. Get power function. These get functions are for when HomeKit asks for the current status of the lights. There are also get functions for brightness, saturation, and hue. Set brightness function. Set the brightness level from 0 to 100. Set the brightness change flag to true, and call the change color method. Set saturation function. Set the new saturation value from 0 to 100. Set the saturation change flag to true, and call the change color method. Set hue function. Set the new hue value from 0 to 360, set the hue change flag to true, and call the change color method. Change color function. Since saturation and hue are submitted separately by HomeKit, and we need both values to calculate the new RGB settings, we call this function each time saturation, hue, and brightness have been changed. We only run the code, though, when either hue and saturation have been changed or brightness has changed. The rest of this function is performing the conversion from HSV to RGB, changing the lights to the new color, and setting the change flags back to false. Color changed outside of HomeKit function. We don't actually need this right now, but we will in a future video, so I went ahead and wrote it. This converts a new RGB value into HSV, changes the colors of the lights, and calls the inform HomeKit function. Most of this code here we can ignore. It's basically further defining the HomeKit accessory, what the capabilities are, and how to handle messages to and from HomeKit. Inform HomeKit function. This function pushes to HomeKit changes that were not initiated by HomeKit. For instance, the HomeKit accessory server is starting, or if the lights are changed by an outside process. Finally, this function gets called when the controller starts. It, in turn, calls the start function on the light controller. Back on the command line, type ls to see the list of files and directories. There should be one called hap-node.js. Type cd hap-node.js and hit enter. Type npm install and hit enter. Then type npm install pygpio and hit enter. Then type sudo node core.js and hit enter. The server should start up and the lights should come on. On your iOS device, open the Home app. Click the plus button. Choose Add Accessory. Tap Don't Have Code or Can't Scan. It should see the LED strip. Tap on it and enter the code 00000123.
Once the light strip has been added, you should be able to change the colors, adjust the brightness, and even use Siri to control the light strip. Make the LED strip green. Make the LED strip purple. Turn off the LED strip. If you run into issues controlling the light strip, try deleting the persist directory on your Raspberry Pi by typing in the command on the screen. Then remove the light strip from HomeKit by going into its details and tapping Remove Accessory. We can use PM2 to make the HomeKit accessory server start every time the Raspberry Pi boots just like we do with the web-based controller. Bring up the list of PM2 apps. You can see the web-based controller server is stopped. Let's add the HomeKit script by typing sudo pm2 start core.js and hitting enter. Next type sudo pm2 save. Now when the Raspberry Pi boots up, it will start the new HomeKit accessory server instead of the web-based controller. I hear you ask, what if I wanted to use both methods to control the light strip? Fear not, that's coming in a future video. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you've not already subscribed, please do.